Poisson distribution. Now this is also a discrete uh, distribution and it uses a parameter lambda. Now notice in binomial distribution we had a parameter p. So if you know p then you know the distribution. Now in this case uh, the parameter is lambda and uh, the distribution is often stated in this way. Now you might uh, wonder how this arises and we are actually going to look at it later. But let me give you an example and we will actually come back to this. Let us say here you have mu is the occurrence rate of something. Now, a lot of times we talk about um, occurrence rate of uh, failures or maybe occurrence rate of uh, problems. Or you can talk about, uh, sometimes people look at how many of you have queuing theory. So, if you, there's a queen th queuing theory which is sometimes uh, used by people in performance analysis also for computer networks and they talk about arrival rate of people who are going to join a queue whatever uh, and um, so probability of uh, our occurrences uh, in time t is given by and we are going to prove it later uh, not right now so right now I just wanted to introduce the distribution. We will come back to this, but this is what is referred to as the Poisson distribution. Okay, now let's come to a continuous distribution. Now, what is your favorite uh, probability distribution? Gaussian okay, Gaussian, why is it your favorite? <laughs> That's nice. Uh, because, um, you come across it very often, easy. right? Yeah, calculations are easier. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, very uh, popular. For example, uh, people think that uh, this is the thing that is applied when a, a, you grade a class because the uh, expectation is that uh, the scores are going to uh, show some kind of bell shaped curve. So this is the Gaussian distribution. Oh, this string may be causing some problems because maybe your camera is focusing on the string. Uh, But probably it doesn't matter too much, I guess. Okay. So let's uh, come to your favorite uh, distribution, which is uh, now what is the correct name for it? Is it the Gaussian or is it uh, normal distribution? also called normal. Now there is some uh, uh, controversy about uh, who invented it first and Germans prefer to call it Gaussian uh, uh, because someone named Gauss discovered in 1809 and in fact if you uh, have any of you been to Germany uh, there's a I think, 10 mark bill Oh, I guess they maybe they have, I think they have stopped using German currency because now they have the European currency. So anyway, so on this uh, 10 mark bill, 
they used to have the Gaussian curve. So they are so proud of their uh, invention that they want to put it on their currency. I used to have one of those, but then maybe I lost it somewhere. So I used to bring it to my classes sometimes. But there is some uh, disagreement. The French people call it the Laplace uh, distribution because the French people say that their scientist, Laplace, discovered it in uh, 1774, which was before Gauss. So, and apparently, uh, I guess uh, the French are probably right. But it, it actually happens to many different inventions. So it turns out that different people, uh, they uh, invent something independently. And then uh, uh, it's hard to sometimes decide. In this case, I guess it's probably uh, you can historically track and see that Laplace he did indeed discover it before. But anyway, if it is, you can call it Gaussian. But if you uh, prefer to agree with the French, you could call it normal, uh, which is this one here. Oh, I guess I need to double check that. Uh, I have it uh, pi, is that correct? That's pi. Oh, that's pi? Yes. Okay, sure. so that, that is correct. Okay, that is indeed correct. Uh, for normal distribution. Uh, now, normal distribution is uh, so common that uh, it is uh, uh, used often in many calculations. And uh, you have uh, uh, tables available. And these days, of course, nobody looks at tables because it is, uh, many people still do, uh, because this uh, uh, is built in into the calculation uh, packages. So you often, the, you will have tables available. For normalized, so you can normalize it, z equal to x minus mu over uh, sigma. And um, you will have uh, the tables. But uh, since uh, uh, now everyone has Excel, and uh, the related things are built in into Excel, now some of the important things to note is that. Uh, if you take the range mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma, so one sigma to this side, one sigma to that side, and that will include 
of the area under the curve. So that we have more than half. So, so going either side by uh, one sigma. So let's say perhaps this is sigma. Let us have just one. And let us say this is sigma. Then you have about 63.8% uh, of the area under the curve. However, if you want to cover most of the possibilities, then uh, how many of you have come across the term uh, three sigma? That is sometimes uh, used as a buzzword, but it, it is actually a technical uh, term. If you go three sigma to either side, That is going to cover 99.7% of the total area under the curve. So if you take the range, uh, 3 sigma on this side, 3 sigma on that side, that is going to include almost all the probability. Now, okay, so why is um, normal distribution so popular? There is the central limit here. which says that a sum of a large number of independent variables tends to have a normal distribution. And this central limit theorem applies regardless of whatever individual distribution they have. So if you have a large number of statistically independent, they have to be statistically independent. If they are not statistically independent, this would not hold. So if you have a large number of statistically independent variables, then you will tend to have a normal distribution. So for example, let us say if you are considering delays through a long path, propagation delays and propagation delay is somewhat random then and if it is a sum of a few propagation delays then uh, the overall propagation delay can be approximated by a uh, normal distribution okay let's look at now the next distribution which is actually uh, very important in reliability calculations, and that is the exponential distribution. And it is a continuous distribution. Oh, I should remember to use my colored chalk. I forgot to use my colored chalk when I had those uh, nice diagrams. Uh, now this is a continuous distribution and the density function is uh, given by uh, this. Where this is the density function of the time a system stays in a particular state. So here let us say we have a state and we could call it, uh, give it some name, maybe we could call it state zero and something happens and it leaves the state and let us say that the rate of leaving the state is governed by a parameter lambda. 